Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing this sick slash ill tag. <laughs> and I was tagged by Emily the Odd One. I'll leave a link down below to her video as well as to the original video. Basically the way this works is that there are a list of different diseases and then you name books that match each disease, which sounds kind of weird now that I'm saying it out loud, but you'll see how it works. So the first one is diabetes and the description is a book that is super super sweet. I feel like the most obvious choice is Anna and the French Kiss and Lola and the Boy Next Door. I have gave Anna and the French Kiss to one of my friends so I just have the dust cover. She described it as being kind of like American Ashley movie but in book form which I think actually describes it quite well because it's kind of cheesy and pretty predictable but it's still really enjoyable to read despite all of that. Also, I don't consider that an insult because I own a Mary-Kate and Ashley movie on DVD. Probably something I should be embarrassed about, but I'm not. Next is Chicken Pox, and that it means a book that you've picked up once, but you'll never pick it up again. And for that one, I chose Virals by Kathy Reichs. Like I've said in previous videos, I really like Kathy Reichs' phone series. So I was really excited when I heard she was writing a young adult book, so I picked this one up and I wasn't really a fan of it and it's supposed to be its own series as well, so I definitely won't be picking up the other books in this series and I probably won't be rereading this one anytime soon. Next is Influenza and it's a book that spread like a virus. For this one, there were a couple books that came to mind, but I feel like the biggest one is Divergent and I guess Insurgent, but mostly Divergent because most people seem to have read this one obviously because it's the first book in the series. I feel like there was just this sudden explosion of everyone talking about Divergent and Insurgent and so I feel like this aptly describes it and I've also given this book out to a lot of people so I'm kind of spreading the virus as well. Next is The Cycle, which this listing makes me laugh but it's a book that you read every month or every year or just on a regular basis and I talk about this all the time but it's To Kill a Mockingbird. I try to reread it at least once a year because it's my all-time favorite book and I love it so much. Next is Insomnia and this is a book that kept you up all night. The first one is kind of an obvious pick. It's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows which I could probably say this for most of the Harry Potters. I pick these up at like midnight or whenever they are released and as soon as I can get them and then I stay up as long as I possibly can until this book is finished. Mostly because I don't want to be spoiled and I need to get this out of my system and figure out what happens next. So this is definitely the obvious choice. The not so obvious choice is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Sklute. I believe that's how you say her last name, but this is a nonfiction book. It talks a lot about science. Scientists took the cells of this woman, Henrietta Lacks, back in the 1950s without her permission or without her knowing, and her cells and DNA have been used in different science classrooms. Even today, like through the past 50 years, this is just explores the story of this lady and what her cells have done for science and all the controversy behind it because her family has no ownership over any of it or over any of the things that have been discovered because of her cells. Next is Amnesia and this is a book that you have read and completely forgotten about. This one was a little bit difficult to find or to figure out what to say because obviously if I've forgotten about the book I'm not going to remember it for this question so I kind of had to search my bookshelves. And the one book I found was The Film Club by David Gilmour. When I saw this on my shelf I couldn't even remember if I'd read this book and then I looked it up on Goodreads and I had and I'd only given it one star so obviously I didn't like it. I don't know why I still own it. This is one of those books where I feel like I would have sold it back to some used bookstore so I should probably do that sometime soon. Next is Asthma and this is a book that took your breath away and for that one I chose A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. This is a classic novel that I didn't read until relatively recently and I wasn't sure if I was going to like it but oh my goodness I love this book and it was amazing and the writing is amazing and everyone should go and read this book. Next is Malnutrition and this is a book that lacked food for thought. I try to avoid books that are super fluffy or don't seem to have a lot going on in them but I was part of this book club and every month there was a different theme and one of the month's theme was Guilty Pleasures. The book that ended up being chosen was this book called Nerd in Shining Armor. I don't even own it. I read like an ebook version of it that someone gave to me so I didn't pay for it. But I don't feel that bad about it because I hated it. It was the worst book ever. It's oh I don't even know remember if I finished it but it was the worst. 
And the final one is Travel Sickness, and this is a book that brought you on a journey through time and or space. There are a lot of options for this. The obvious ones are things like Harry Potter and Narnia. The book I'm going to talk about is Eat, Pray, Love, which is a book that everyone basically knows about at this point, and I think it's given a lot of flack unnecessarily. It really isn't that bad. I mean, it's a fluffy book and it's a memoir about a woman's life, so you kind of have to know that going in. But I felt like when I was reading this, I really was traveling to all the different countries with her. And I also read this when I was on summer vacation in India, so I felt like that also had some of the influence on it because when she was reading things about India, I could completely relate to it. I think that's why I ended up enjoying this book so much and why I don't hate it quite as much as everyone else seems to. So yeah, that's the end of this tag. I don't ever tag people in my tag videos because I'm always really bad at thinking of people, so I just tag everyone. If you want to do the tag, do it. I think this one's a lot of fun and really creative, so I feel like more people should be doing this tag. I also wanted to say I'm really sorry if like my voice cracked or sounds weird in this video. I went to a football tournament on Saturday and my voice is still kind of recovering from that. So that's why I may have sounded funny during this video. I feel like I can even hear it right now as I'm talking. Feel free to leave comments down below if you've read any of these books and agree with me on the categories or if you guys can think of something else that could fit into these different categories. I feel like there are a lot of options that could fit into different ones. I tried to pick things that were a little bit different than what people have already said. A lot of people have said Anna and French Kiss for some of these and the Harry Potters fit into a lot of these categories categories, but I tried to pick things that were a little bit different and a little bit more variety than what you normally see. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. Basically, you'll see how this works every, there's, basically you'll see how this, <laughs> the not so obvious choice is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lebatba. Like I said, I gave Anna and the Boy Next Door, to, nope, that's not what it's called. <laughs>